this series of videos, we'll be talking about testing differences, specifically using inferential statistics for differences in means and proportions. We're going to start off by talking about comparing population means. And just to introduce this topic, uh, let's talk about the target parameter. So let's say we want to investigate if men earn more on average than women. So our null hypothesis would be that the mean uh, salary or mean earnings for men is equal to the mean salary for women. And the alternative hypothesis would be that the average for men is more than women. We could rewrite this by subtracting the mean for women from both sides of the equation or the inequality. And that would give us that the mean for men minus the mean for women is zero, or the mean for men minus the mean for women is bigger than zero. So this part here, uh, the mean for men minus the mean for women, is actually going to be our target parameter, what we're going to be investigating. And this whole zero on the right-hand side, it doesn't even have to be zero. We could adjust the formulas to make the difference anything we really want to test. So maybe we want to test to see if men make uh, $10,000 more than women. So instead of zero, we could put 10000 there. So we can adjust these formulas accordingly. So our target parameter is going to be just the differences in the means, or generically, the mean of the first group minus the mean of the second group. There are two different types of sampling that we're going to be investigating when talking about uh, looking at the difference in population means. And it's important to know which type of sampling you're using. So for independent sampling, um, we're going to have two independent samples from, the, from different populations. So there's two completely separate groups of people or whatever objects you're looking at. Um, your sample sizes can be the same or they can be different. You can take a sample size of 10 and a sample size of 20 if you like. Um, and there's no connection between a single observation from one group and an observation from another. So in other words, you're not measuring the same person twice. Um, your target parameter, again, is just going to be the difference in the means. For dependent sampling, um, which is also called a matched pairs design, you essentially have one sample of paired differences that are observed um, from a single population of differences. I know that sounds a little confusing, but let's explore this. So it's usually just one group that's measured or observed twice. So maybe a before and after type thing. Or maybe you're just measuring two different things on a single person. You could also possibly pair people based on similar characteristics before you start your study. Maybe pair people according to IQs or weight or similar characteristics. Um, the sample sizes must be the same. So if one sample has a sample size of 15, the other one must also be 15. And we'll say that our uh, sample sizes of differences would be the same number. It would be 15. Um, the pairs of observations, um, these match pairs, they must be paired before the analysis begins. So you just have a sample of a bunch of uh, pairs of observations. Um, your target parameter is still going to be the difference of means, but we're going to treat this as a single number, um, just as a difference in means. And so let's explore this one example um, on the acidity of mouthwash. So acid has been found to be a primary cause of dental cavities. It is theorized that mouthwash, if acidic, may contribute to cavities. Three bottles of mouthwash, each of a different brand, were randomly selected from a drugstore. The pH level, and by the way, a lower pH means a higher acidity, of each bottle was measured before, um, so it was measured on the date that they actually purchased the bottles, and also after 30 days. So the question is, um, are these pH values that we're sampling, are they coming from independent or dependent, in other words, matched pairs sampling? Okay, well, well, the answer would be dependent or matched pairs. Since we're measuring each of those three bottles twice, we're looking at a before and after, and we're just taking the differences of a single bottle before and after three times. So it's dependent or three matched pairs that we're looking at. Now uh, let's look at a second example. Suppose researchers wanted to know whether there was a difference in comprehension among students learning a computer program based on the style of the text that they were using. So they randomly divided 36 students into two groups of 18. 
The first group uh, learned um, using software that used a vi uh, learned the software using a visual manual, so a more interactive type text. While group two learned the software using a traditional text uh, text type manual. Scores on an exam uh, for each individual for each group uh, was done um, after they studied their manuals and they recorded these results. So the question is the same as before. Are these scores coming from independent or dependent, or in other words, match pair sampling? Well, even though we have equal sample sizes, 18 in group one, 18 in group two, there's no, con uh, no connection between these two groups. It's not like one person was measured twice. They're completely different people, and there was no grouping of these people into pairs um, before they actually did the study. So as a result, these are independent samples. Each group is separate. They're independent from each other.